کتاب ہے جی فروسن سے زیر طبع انشاءاللہ آ جائے گی اس میں ہے یہ نظم یہ کیا نام کیا کتاب کا کتاب کا نام ہے خراب محبتوں کی ہاں سر آخری سوال میرے حصے کا اس کے بعد میرے بھائی عبدالباسط مجاہد صاحب آپ سے کچھ سوال کریں گے جب آپ یونیسٹی آسے ہیں تو کیسی فیلنگ ہوتی ہے آپ کو خوش ہوتے ہیں دیکھ کے یہ دعائیں یہ بچوں کی دعائیں یار پتہ ہے میں تو کو بتاؤں I'm now seventy five years but I'm quite healthy I smoke تو میں میں سمجھتا ہوں جب یہاں آتا ہوں تو میں سمجھتا ہوں یہ میرے ساتھی جو ہیں چاہے وہ میرا چپراسی تھا چاہے وہ میرا کلیق تھا ان کی دعائیں ان کی محبتیں انہوں نے مجھ کو زندہ رکھا ہے بلکل ٹھیک ٹاک ان کی دعائیں ہیں ریلی ہے میں بتا دوں تو میں اپنے گھر آتا ہوں یہاں اس اگاہ تو میں لگتا ہے اپنے گھر آتا ہوں کیسے فیل کرتے ہیں اس یونسٹی کو جب یہاں سے گزر رہے ہوتے ہیں اپنے پینشن لینے جب آتے ہیں تو کیسے محسوس کرتے ہیں بس دیکھو نا اپنے گھر آتا ہوں گھر آتا ہوں گھر آتا ہوں کوئی ایسی چیز جو آپ نہ کر سکے ہوں اور آپ کو رہ گیا ہو دل میں کہ میں کچھ دن مل جاتے تو زیادہ نہیں کوئی ریپنٹس نہیں ہے کوئی ریپنٹس نہیں ہے ہاں مجھے یہ ضرور ہے کہ ہمارے وائس چانسلرز باز مسئل ڈاکٹر سے کی مرہوم ڈاکٹر اور یہ احمد مایودین وغیرہ ان کی بڑی خدمات تھی یار ہم لوگ تو خیر چونکہ میں اس یونیورسٹی پہ کام کرتا رہا تو ہر جگہ میں اپنا نام لگا دی لگا سکتا ہوں مگر ان لوگوں نے بڑا کام کیا یار ڈاکٹر جی علانہ ڈاکٹر جی علانہ علانہ صاحب نے محنت کی یہ ڈاکٹر زکی نے مجھے یہ پتہ چلا کہ ڈاکٹر زکی صاحب یہاں آئے تھے تو وہ ان کو مطلب مطلب یہ وہ تھے جنہوں نے اس یونیورسٹی کو بنایا کہ وہ فاؤنڈنگ لیکن بعد میں پھر ان کو کسی نے یہاں وہ اہمیت نہیں دی جس کا افسوس ہوتا ہے مجھے تھوڑا سر سر ان کے نام پہ تو ابھی ایک آڈیٹوریم کا نام ڈبلیو ایم زکی جو ہمارا اکیڈمی کمپلیکس بنا ہے وہاں پہ ایک آڈیٹوریم بنا ہے جس کا نام ڈبلیو ایم زکی رکھا ہے یہ سر بالکل ہی ہمارے پریس کے ساتھ جو بڑا وہ بنا ہے بڑی بلڈنگ بنی ہے پانچ چھ منظر بلڈنگ اس میں سر وہ جو آڈیٹوریم ہے اس کا نام ڈبلیو ایم زکی رکھا گیا بہت اچھا ہے بلکل اور مجھے ابھی صاحب نے ایک اسائنمنٹ دیا کیا بات ہے اللہ تعالیٰ خوش رکھے ابھی صاحب کو کہ ایک اسائنمنٹ بھی دیا ہے جس میں ان کی زندگی پہ اور انہوں نے جو اپنیسٹی کے لئے کام کیا ایک الادہ بک بڑی بات ہے بڑی بات ہے بڑی بات ہے بڑی بات ہے اس طرح دیکھو نا اللہ نہ صاحب نے اللہ ان کو زندگی دے میرے خیال میں اللہ نہ صاحب نے کتنی محنت سے یار کس طرح کام کیا کورسز بنائے کس طرح اچھا اس طرح ڈاکٹر زمان تھے پھر احمد مایودین بڑے وائس چانسلہ اسی طرح اور تو یہ جو تھے یہ ان لوگوں نے بڑی محنت کی یار بڑی محنت کی یہ پائنیرز تھے جی سر تو بہت ساری باتیں ہیں کی جا سکتی ہیں اور انشاءاللہ کسی اور بیٹھک میں ہم اس کی دوبارہ بات کریں گے تو میں ابھی دعوت دیتا ہوں اپنے دوست عبدالباسط مجاہد کو باسط مجاہد سے درخواست ہے کہ وہ آئیں اور سر سے کچھ کوئی ان کے ذہن میں کچھ سوال آتے ہیں تو وہ ضرور کریں کیونکہ ہسٹری ڈپارٹمنٹ کے وہ پروفیسر ہیں تو یہ ہسٹری ڈپارٹمنٹ جن کے دین ہوتے تھے سر تو باسط مجاہد سے درخواست ہے کہ وہ آئیں اور کچھ سوال کریں سر this is great honor today that you are here in your own university and this studio I just uh, would like to ask you, tell us something about your early life. About my early life? Yeah. About my early life, you know, I was born in, in Fort, it's Fort Sandiman. Right. Na, now it's known Zob. Zob. Mm. And uh, uh, my father was a railway guard. Mm. Uh, then, you know, I was brought up got myself educated at Quetta, is Islamia school. Historic school. Ah, historic school. Where your father was my teacher. Yeah. <laughs> and an honor. Huh? What, what a great time. And Mulana Sahib Jate, Hamari Asad, Hamari Ustad. Yes, yes. So, Islamia school, and, and that, that, that time, you know, institutions, those schools were the real institutions, which used to impart education, not only education, but also, you know, the the moral education yes of course and 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 the teachers used to be the models role models uh i can't tell you and they were in those days obviously they were the mr know everything only source of knowledge yeah. we could derive from those teachers uh, uh i remember even during winters 
when 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 there was a snowfall, uh, schools were cl other schools were closed. For example, our our in Islamia school, they used to come in the evening and teach us, teach us without any fee, without That's any right. tuition fee, and and there was competition always between schools. Yeah, that our students should, you know, uh, uh, got positions, in, get positions in exams. As, in exams. And uh, and they were the teachers who used to uh, st start with the students. Mm. For example, I remember uh, my English teacher, Khuda uh, Bakshe, Master Farhat Ali Khan. Yeah, he was uh, uh, he was uh, he, he was not only uh, uh, he did it. He was uh, he was having a master's degree. In, in literature, mm. in law, as well as in geography. Oh. And he used to teach us geography as well as English. Mm. And I remember uh, when I, uh, the way he used to teach, for example, if I didn't know the spellings of the word conscience, mm -hmm. so he said, uh, he said, do you know the spellings of your, your subject science? I said, yes. Ah, he okay. said, S-C-I-E-N. S C, I E and C science. Yeah. He said, just add C U N before it. It That's becomes nice. conscience. Yeah. It becomes conscience. What a tip. What a tip. Then he said, uh, then he gave, uh, told us what the conscience means. He said, there's a little God between yourself, ah. within yourself, which tells you what is bad and what is good. The name of that little God is conscience. Mm. You know, like this, and and uh, and also tricks. For example, on receive. Yeah. While, while spelling the word receive, C E I or I E, you are s yeah, yeah. sometimes you're confused. Yeah, you're confused. You know what he said? He said just write down R E C N two I's or two E's and put the dot in the middle. <laughs> he said <laughs> the benef a... benefit of doubt will go to the student. You <laughs> That's know. That's nice. That's nice. And it was the first time I learned. Interesting. Yeah. It was the first time I learned the meanings of the word news, for example. Mm. Information which comes from all the four sides, yeah. north, east, west, and south. Mm -hmm. Then, then he said, then he said, you know, one, one uh, other thing. For example, I often used to misspell uh, together, mm -hmm. T O G A T H E R <laughs> instead of E. Yeah, right. So you know what he told me. He said it's very easy to remember. He said it's it is to get her, not to get her. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look, nice, you see, nice. I, this is how they used to teach us. And they used to teach us mathematics, geometry, sciences, mm -hmm. and algebra, you know, all in the evening, uh, in the cold days, winter days. Yeah, yeah. And, and we used to bring the firewood from yeah. our homes, coal, and the quota stove. Yeah. And you know, they used to teach, I mean, what, what is it? The typical word for that uh, wood is gutka over uh, there. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Wood yes. Uh, that particular school you were mm. remembering, mm. uh, Kaidi Azam named that school Chota Aligarh. Chota Aligarh. It, it was. Uh, yes. Uh, and you, it was. you know that a lot of people from that school huh. you named huh. uh, in the discussion Justice Absolutely. Sheikh Riaz. They, they, they he are, might they be your class fellow at that time. Even Justice uh, uh, Iftikhar Choudhury. Iftikhar Choudhury. He was a student of that. Chief and, and many, many of them. And, and you see, as you said, that it was Chota Aligarh. Those are the institutions which used to leave an impact on your personality. Mm -hmm. Even today, the way we speak, the way we behave, the universe, that institution had left a stamp on our personalities. Of course. Of course. It, it, you know, we, we carry that. We carry that uh, 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 icon. Yeah. And uh, sir, another thing is that whenever uh, Koita people, they meet each other and they start uh, speaking Gulabi Urdu. <laughs> and once I was presenting uh, a talk uh, at a Turkish institution and I said that uh, the Urdu dialect of Koita is Rosi. Rosi. Huh? Because of roses, you were <laughs> telling about <laughs> roses. <laughs> so uh, do you feel nostalgic about Koita? A lot. You know, ob obviously, yeah. obviously, when you are you born there, you had ch your childhood spent there, mm -hmm. and and Koita used to be a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. it was a it was a small uh, 
uh, a heaven, you know, it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Dr. Saab, now uh, coming to this, our university and this mm. distance uh, mm. education system, mm. what do you think? Uh, our nation is nowadays facing problems, a lot of problems, and particularly mm. problems in education. Mm. So, do you think that this uh, distance learning mode is the answer to our problems? It is, to a, to, to, a, to a great extent, because, you know, the distance education system, it bridges many gaps. Of course. The gap between few with education and many without. Yeah. Right? The gap between generations, people of all ages can read, yeah. can come and be become the students of the university. Then, you know, the, the, the gap between uh, theory and practice. Mm. You can work as well as you can yeah, get education. Yeah. You, can, you can blend theory with practice, but you, you can, uh, you can bl blend experience mm. with, with, with the, with the with the theoretical knowledge which you learn, get out of the books. The gap between, uh, let's say, uh, between uh, uh, generations, as I said. Yeah, of course. There's People no of all gap. ages, yes. Then, you know, between costs and benefits. Now, now, you can see that the number of students which the university has, somebody said in millions. Yeah, of course. Now, now the, the, the fixed costs get tilly distributed over per student, per cap, and the per student cost becomes lower and lower. Mm -hmm. When the fixed costs get distributed over larger number of students, then you know the per student cost becomes lower. It's a cheaper method. Yeah, yeah, a, and at the same time, you can also earn while being a student. So it bridges the gap between costs and benefits also. So True. this is a something, and also the time. It bridges gap, you know, between uh, what you call the elitist view of the education yeah, yeah. for the, the, and, and the people's own perceptions about their own education. Mm -hmm. when, when, when you teach them in, in villages and other pla places in their own homes, then they try to, you know, they, they try to so find out the solutions to their own problems. It becomes more pragmatic. Learning becomes more pragmatic and problematic. Mm -hmm. Just tries to solve problems day to day living rather than something which is be, being imposed on you from the air-conditioned rooms. Yeah, yeah. You know, those thoughts. So that is. And one thing more, uh, sir, mm. I would like to share with you. Mm. Uh, I think 10 years ago, I was mm. visiting one village here in Islamabad, mm. Sehala, mm. and I uh, was buying some chicken or something like that. Mm. So that shopkeeper who mm. was uh, selling chicken, mm. he was reading the book, Alam yes. Iqbal University book. Absolutely. It's so it was so amazing and it was... So uh, fascinating, yes, so course, fascinating. Of yes. course. So and fascinating. Uh, he said that uh, I am doing my graduation from mm, Open yes, University. Yes, yes. So this is the achievement of this, uh, this achievement. system. This is the achievement. Uh, sir, another thing is that uh, even uh, in, in this 21st century, a mm. uh, lot of uh, our population is living in rural areas. Absolutely. And because of uh, certain uh, socio religious conditions mm. and views female education has a lot of hurdles absolutely what do you think that this system it would exists. be the answer to this question also absolutely it is, it is it is demonstrating yes it is demonstrating if you see the, the 57 percent of the enrollment is of, of women mm. and it's empowering women and most of the women are taking courses like education yeah in in the field of education i think our larger percentage of women is enrolled for our courses which PTC, ECT, BA, yes, MA like this. That means that they are the teachers who are teaching in rural areas, in small towns. So we are indirectly also, you know, helping the female education in those areas where there's a vacuum. Yes, of course. Where there's a, there's a deficiency. And, 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 the, and I've seen that, uh, to be very honest, uh, I, I've seen that it's 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 not easy to pass the exams. They have to undergo a rigorous program of studies, periodical, you know, assignments, and assignments you do. Maybe I, I get the assignment done by you, but if I, as as a rule is, if if I uh, pass, if I let's say if I get seventy percent marks in my assignments, but in the final exam, which is like any other and system, any form, exam. system, if I get, uh, let's say, 40%, then I fail. Yes, of course. It has to be balanced. 
So Check and balance is over there. Absolutely. So this means that it's not an easy, easy exam to pass. Because some people do perceive in yeah. this way. It's easy it to pass. It is very easy, but it is not, it's not, not it's that. Not. One thing more, sir. In 2010, there was an international conference mm. uh, at Bada Gali, oh. organized by mm. um, Peshawar University. Oh. So I presented one concept paper over there, Achha. and that was uh, about Open University. Achha. That Open University is uh, playing the role of uh, mm. bridging different mm. area people, different mm. languages yes. uh, in this country. Yes. So what thing I would like to share, sir, with you, mm. and uh, it was very um, mm. moving moment also. Mm. When I presented my paper, mm. one white bearded scholar mm. within that mm. uh, conference, mm. He uh, came up mm. to the dice mm. and he hugged me mm. and he said, I am living in a remote village of uh, Khaybar Pashtunkha mm. and I know what open university is. Mm. My four daughters graduated from this Mashallah, university. Mashallah. Look, look now they are in their uh, home also and they are serving their nation mm. also. So this is what absolutely. people feel about open university. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you see the amazing thing is that you go to any community and you do find people. Yeah. And they, they are not so obvious otherwise because they don't go to the institution, but they are within their own homes and they are studying, they are learning. Mashallah. Uh. Sir, one thing more. Mm. I am serving here in history department mm. and mm. We, uh, we know through mm. our seniors mm. that this history department was part of social sciences department mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, you were the pioneer. Mm. The day before yesterday, Professor mm. Rathor Saab was uh, in our uh, department and uh -huh. we were uh, Achy, did he come? Yes, yes. Achy, sir. Sometime. How is he? Achy, oh, mashallah, Achy, he is uh, in good Achy. health Achy. and uh, Achy. Achy. seldom he comes. Achy. So, tell us how this history department came out from social sciences department and what was that? How you were feeling that now this your department brought more departments and all these things? What is and your feeling? It was quite gradual. It was quite gradual, I think. Uh, uh, to be very candid, at the beginning, it was, uh, it was, it depended mostly on the, on, on the uh, number of people you had within yeah. the department and their qualifications. Uh, luckily, we had uh, some teachers who had their master's degree in history, for example, uh, from abroad. Mm, Dr. Rashid was there, I believe. So he picked up yeah. the history. He started writing uh, courses on history. History. Uh, I wrote, for example, the first unit on Nazriya wa Tehreek e Pakistan, ah, ideology. That's, that's and great. That was the, the, the one which I calligraphed myself. Uh -huh. That was also on history, how it uh, uh, And it was not, uh, previously it was a social science department, mm -hmm. where we tried to, to present, you know, courses which are integrated, interdisciplinary Interdisciplinary, nature, right. Where sociology, economics, Pakistan studies, science, Pakistan studies together. Gender studies. Might. And then, you know, depending upon, uh, you know, who later entered into the faculty, with what qualifications. So automatically, so, so we had a geography course, we had a social work, mm -hmm. because I had also a degree in social work. Mm, that's nice. I had my education abroad from the University of Chicago in sociology. Mm -hmm. But pr prior to that, from Punjab University, I had done my master's in social work. Oh, right. So that was an opportunity for me to also initiate that course. Mm -hmm. So we started that. Community development, case work, such courses were initiated. So this is how, how the courses were started. Where does the university stand today? What do you feel? I, th I think the uh, university is, uh, let's say, uh, university uh, now, because student number has increased tremendously, 